Hey, what's up guys? Now that I've finally made some time, let's go over the new essential materials that have been introduced with the new America Singularity and where and how to farm them. There are also better drop rates for some old essential materials in the America Singularity, so we'll cover those too. So the four new essential materials we have in the game are Bloodstone Tears, Horns, Tallows, and Spirit Roots, all of which are fucking rare essential materials on the same level as Talons, Scales, and Hearts. So in other words, they're all a bitch and a half to farm, with the Roots taking the cake for being the most annoying to farm, on average. So let's start from the beginning. Bloodstone Tears, or just Tears or Blood, whatever you want to call them, are gold drops from the Gazer enemy, which for now you can only find at the Alexandria node in America with a 10.2% drop rate. If you're free to play, let me start by saying that all these new essential materials are going to be really tough to farm because they all have enemies that are really strong. So to farm this node, I recommend bringing a saber, an archer, and a support waiver. And spoiler alert, you're going to be using a lot of support waivers when you're farming these new essential materials. For your backline, bring your strongest lancer, another saber, and then another lancer. Your Saber, Archer, and Waver frontline should beat the first wave no problem, but for the second wave, attack in accordance with your command deck. If you've got a lot of Saber cards, attack the Lancers, and if you've got a lot of Lancer cards, attack the Archer. Your Lancers should survive until the third wave to fight the Gazer, assuming they've still got decent health. I'd recommend Ku here in particular because his protection from arrows skill will go a long way in keeping him alive for the third wave. Keep in mind also that Proto Ku's beast hunting skill doesn't apply against the Gazer for whatever reason, so you won't get bonus damage from that. If you're a whale, bring two AoEs and one single target Lancer. I personally use Kidgill and Skahawk, and since the second wave is mixed, any 4 star Berserker Servant with decent enough MP level will do, and Skahawk should be able to handle the Gazer on her own. The next mad is the Warhorse's Small Horn, or just Horns. They're a gold drop from the Bicorn enemy that can only be found in the Kearney node with a 12.7% drop rate. For free to plays, bring Saber Lily, Caesar, and Support Waver, and then stack your backline with Sabers and Berserkers. Use the first wave to charge up both Caesar's and Saber Lily's MP charges as much as you can, but focus on Saber Lily's MP charge first, and also make sure to use a third skill which increases MP generation rate. Use Saber Lily's MP on second wave and face card the Saber enemy there to take care of him, and then use Caesar's MP against the Bicorn. You may also want to save Waver's buffs until the third wave so that you can kill the Bicorn as fast as possible, since it can still do a lot of damage even to your Sabers, but that's up to you. If you're a whale, bring two AoEs, either Berserkers or Sabers if they're strong enough, and bring Okta, Nero, or Rama. Okta needs to be at least MP3, I'd say, and have at least a level 6 uh, Shukuchi skill, and roughly the same with Nero. Rama can always one-turn the Bicorn if you produce enough crit stars for him and have a Braid Chain ready for him. If you don't have any of these three, or if they're just not strong enough, try looking for a really strong Okta, Nero, or Rama support on your friends list who can one-shot the Bicorn for you. Next is the Black Tallow, or just Tallow, or Tar if you prefer. It's a gold drop from the Soul Eater enemy that you can only find, for now, in the Lubbock node at a 12.3% drop rate. For free to plays, bring Ku and two archers. The archers can clear the saber enemies in the first wave, and Ku just needs to stay alive until the second wave where he can help clear the archer enemies more quickly. For the soul eater itself, because it's an assassin and Xunjiang isn't in the game yet, bring a really strong single target support berserker who can do massive damage to it. So use plug suit to bring him in manually in case your frontliners all make it to the third wave. If you're a whale, just bring two AoEs like usual and then bring a strong single target berserker to take out the soul eater. Just know that unless you plug suit waver in for buffs or something, your berserker needs to be like MP5 Kintoki with like max level monstrous strength or something stupid like that to one shot the soul eater. And lastly, the Spirit Root, or just Root, which is a gold drop from the Spriggan enemy, which is only found in the Washington DC node with a 7.1% drop rate, which is basically the same as you getting a heart or a scale from the class dailies right now. But at least the Spriggan's default drop is a Saber class Gold Ember, so hey, at least that's something, I guess. For free to play, just know that this is the toughest node to farm by far, just because the enemies here are the strongest out of all the nodes we've talked about so far. So for first wave, bring Nobu, Ku, and support Waver, and have Ku focus the Archer enemy and Nobu work on the Saber enemies, and then save Waver's buffs until second wave. Use the first wave to charge Nobu's MP so that when you go into the second wave, you can use Nobu's MP right away with Waver's attack buff. If somehow Ku also has his MP charged, use that too on the Lancer since Nobu's MP won't do a lot of damage to the Lancer enemy. Stack your backline with Saber Lily, a rider to help you deal with the second wave caster, and your strongest single target archer. 
Use your backliners to help you finish off the second wave, and then use your single target archer to kill the Spriggan. Note that Uriel doesn't have male damage advantage with her MP, since the Spriggan is a statue and thus doesn't have a gender, even if he does look like a guy. Robin Hood may be a more reliable damage dealer with this poison gimmick, or bring David along so you can just skill seal him. For whales, bring two AoEs as usual and bring either a strong single target archer or berserker. Orion isn't ideal here for the same reason that Yuri isn't, so bringing along single target berserkers instead might be your better option here. And that's it for the new essential materials, but some old essential materials can be farmed in the American Free Quests with better drop rates, so let's go over those too. Hero Proofs can now be farmed at a 67.9% drop rate at the Dallas node compared to the previous 59.6% at the Pirate Ship node. Dragon Fangs can now be farmed at a 62.7% drop rate at the Deming node compared to the previous 50.3% at Wyvern Island in Okeanos, which I'm sure many of you will be glad to hear given the shit I've heard about the node being bipolar as fuck about Fang drops. Void Cells can now be farmed at a 63.6% .6 drop rate at the Charlotte node compared to the previous 22.6% at the Archipelago node in Okeanos. Eternal Gears can now be farmed at a 40.9% drop rate at the Chicago node, which is the secret node that you unlock after beating the Washington DC free quest three times, compared to the previous 26.4% at Clerkenwell in London. And finally, and most importantly, Chaos Claws or Talons can now be farmed at a 20.5% drop rate at the Des Moines node, compared to the abysmal 3% drop rate at Germania in Septum, or the 11% drop rate during Berserker dailies. This is by far the best place to farm Claws for a long time, so with this node, you don't have to worry about farming for Claws and events anymore. I'll add to this by saying that there are going to be free quests and feature singularities where claw drop rates are also going to be really good, but they're either marginally worse or marginally better, and they come out with singularities that won't be available for a long time, like later on this year or next year, so for now, Des Moines should cover all the talents you need. And that's it, hopefully this video was short and sweet for you guys, since Jalter is coming out literally tonight and I did say that I wanted to get a video like this out before Jolta's event arrived, so finally it's here. The day before the event came out comes out. Good luck to farming the rest of your Jolta materials if you're still working on them, that is. And I'll see you all in the salt mines tomorrow. Uh, I mean the Da Vinci event! Lol.